they get its Ed Light Strike buddy. An episode of the very popular shoe files for you today. I'm rewinding back to that time where somebody wore the Adi Zero Prime X and won a marathon race. The 15 millimeters of heel stack helped somebody to come first in the Vienna City Marathon back in 2021. They were quickly though removed from the records and the original second place runner suddenly became the first. It was found that that piece of footwear infringed the World Athletics regulations. I'm going to dip into that subject today. Why is it that so many people love or loathe the Adi Zero Prime X? Welcome back to the channel, people. Thanks for tuning in, it's always appreciated. Help us out by hitting us up with a super thanks down below if you've got a particular question you wanna get straight to the mind of Ed Bud. Give this video a thumbs up like and also share it with your running buddies. And think about subscribing too. It's free of charge, you know. Imagine coming first in a race and then being disqualified because your shoes were too high. Well, that's exactly what happened back in the Vienna City Marathon in 2021. The winner originally was wearing the Adi Zero Prime X from Adidas. This is a shoe that Adidas have developed and they very much say it is to break the rules, to go beyond what is accepted. Ethiopia's Dorara Harissa did come through the finish line first in two hours, nine minutes and 22 seconds. Now, that's an incredibly good time obviously not one of the world's best times by any means. His marathon PB appears to be around two hours, eight minutes and nine seconds. So that's some improvement actually over the time that he achieved in Vienna City. So this marathon runner's by no means a slouch. Was it really necessary for him to wear the Prime X at that Vienna City marathon? It seemed to generate an incredible amount of hype, lots and lots of discussion about the shoe. Let's not forget in the sample size, this one comes in at 50 millimeters. In my UK size 11, it's more like 56 millimeters of heel stack. It begs the question, how did this actually come to happen? Surely someone that was at the race itself must have pointed it out beforehand. There must have been delegates from Adidas there. This guy is a sponsored Adidas athlete. Did they just kind of let it happen? Did they want it to happen? Any publicity is good publicity, right? At least that's what I used to think when I played the fantastic video game Rockstar Ate My Hamster on the ZX Spectrum. With all those new rulings in place, I was surprised to see it happen around that period. Surely the runner must have known about those stack height regulations. In later marathons that year, the runner was seen wearing the Adios Pro 2. That, of course, is a, a loud shoe. It's totally legit. There was even a few websites and a few news articles that suggested that the runner was actually asked to run wearing those shoes as some sort of wild publicity stunt. I can't believe that someone would want to run 26.2 miles only to be disqualified knowing that the shoes they were wearing were against the rules. I just can't believe it. Kind of soul destroying. Surely if you're going to run 26.2 miles you want to get something out of it, especially at that pace. We know that Adidas, Nike and other brands are not adverse to stating how banned or illegal their sports products are. Nike do that all the time with the Air Jordan 1, even though that it wasn't actually that shoe that was banned, it was the Nike Airship. They still keep putting out Air Jordan 1s that are like banned variants and things like that to use that little story, the storytelling there to try and sell more shoes. These things only seem to make those products more desirable, more wanted by consumers, perhaps followers of those specific events and sports. I find it hard to believe around that period that Adidas really needed to push their carbon plate super shoes. Do they really need to advertise and promote them in that fashion? Certainly in 2022, things have changed a little bit now. If you want to get a pair of shoes, aside from a couple of models here and there, it's relatively easy to pick them up now. That could have something to do with the current economic crisis across the world, but it certainly seems a little bit easier now than it was perhaps in 2020 or 2021 to pick up a shoe that you particularly want to get. Perhaps it's down to the huge range of cushioned shoes that are available now. There's super shoes for practically everything. The market's kind of saturated. Every single brand has got their own particular super shoe or a range of them, in fact. I think runners are being a little bit more shrewd with their purchases. But I do think that the Prime X is a little bit different. It stands out from the rest of the contenders. The three stripe brand aren't just ripping up the rule book here. They're setting fire to it and throwing it into the sea. 
the level of cushion and ease of actually running in the shoe, if you have run in it, you will know what I'm talking about. It's quite staggering in truth. Far more assistive than the Vaporfly or the Alphafly Next Percent in my humble opinion. Less of a sponge, more of a constant downhill, which I have to say leaves the legs feeling very fresh and the heart rate at a very sustainable level. Perceived effort and actual effort are far lower wearing the Prime X. I've run many different types of runs in it, lower pace stuff, faster pace stuff, heart rate is always lower. It's just very clear to see, cannot be denied. Now, Adidas know that the vast majority of their customers are not elite athletes. They're just people like you and me. A number of us out there just simply like to run. That's where I get my kicks. We like to challenge ourselves and we're never gonna be knocking on the door of national or world records. As such, does the 40 millimeter stack height limit really affect us? Well, no. Is it worth considering? You know, I've had people over the last couple of weeks doubt my integrity that I would wear a certain shoe of a certain stack height. I mean, it's a shoe. It's just some rubber and a bit of foam. And don't really think it means you can doubt someone's integrity. If you want to, that's fine. I got better things to do with my time than that. The 56 millimeters of stack height in my version of the Prime X are an exhilarating experience, I have to say. It's just fun. I actually want to put them on and I really enjoy running in them. Would I wear them for a race? Probably not. Most of the races that I take in in the local area or a bit further afield, I've got quite a few turns. Sometimes some double backs. I don't really feel that the Prime X is suited for that. But as a shoe that helps me maintain my training and keep my legs feeling fresh, it's fantastic. Easy leg loosening recoveries. I find them great. Or faster paced long runs for that matter. Though running those with a bit of an eye on your heart rate and trying to keep that very sustainable i suppose after a while running in that huge foam stack doesn't really seem that obscure or obtuse and it almost trains you to run on your mid to forefoot as well if you're going to run on the heel in the prime x i can see why some people might have some issues if you're quite a deliberate heel striker i don't think it's the shoe for you there's a lot there in the heel but there is a plate literally directly under your foot under that insole now would it be quite the same without that rear plate without the energy rods and those blades that are installed in the forefoot i think it's a cumulative effect of all of those different technologies put together some people say that the foam magic in the Vaporfly is what gives it that special feel. I think here it's all of the different elements. Now, imagine something. If you perhaps weren't as tall as me and you were maybe five foot six, five foot seven, but you still had size 11 shoes. I think the rule there about 40 millimeters bends a little bit, doesn't it? In terms of foot size, obviously you then have a Primax with 56 millimeters, but you're much shorter and lower to the ground. That's like six millimeters over the standard size so it's all a bit weird really surely it should be done on actual foot size and height and other attributes perhaps what happens if you've got like size 14 feet you know how much cushion and extra foam are you going to get then i digress let's get back on track is one centimeter or like 10 millimeters extra really going to benefit you all that much does it grant the runner who's wearing the shoe that much of an advantage i'm not so sure about that i mean where did this 40 millimeter stack height limit come from how did they come to that number did they sort of like pick it out the air did they find the highest one that was available at that time and use that as a benchmark why was that figure deemed okay for road shoes i think some people are always gonna love or loathe the shoe regardless of sort of how well received it is by the general public i was really on the fence about the prime x originally but since i got a pair and another pair of them i gotta say they're probably one of my favorite shoes in the collection just an absolute joy to run in exciting exhilarating and leaves you feeling like you want more Perhaps more questions than answers in today's shoe files, but the Primex is quite a mystery. Let me know what you make of the Adi Zero line of shoes and the Primex down in the comments. Would you race in the Primex? Yeah, that's a good question. That will create a lot of discussion. 
musical interlude time. I've got one today for you from Sheik's early catalogue. It's one of my favourite tracks. It's in fact been in my car now for about three or four months and I listen to it every day. It's a fantastic tune called Happy Man. Now I love the groove on this one, the production, the drum sound is sort of like firm and moist. Everything's warm on this record. It just makes you feel really good. It puts a smile on your face. There's some super funky guitar, obviously from the master Niall Rogers and the bass line is very innovative saying to really key into links everything together i like the whole sentiment of the track as well guys talking about how nothing can really touch him he's still going to be a happy man things can come at him and he's just sort of batting them away in fact it's very similar to the sentiment in that track called happy that was released not long ago you can't go wrong with early chic material it's a bit of a shame really that the whole Disco Sucks movement came along and kind of put pay to that section of Nile Rodgers' career. You know, Bernard Edwards and him were uh, an amazing duo, producing wonderful tracks over and over. Go and check this one out, guys, from Chic. It's called Happy Man. Thanks for tuning in, people. Remember, if you haven't done so already, to hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications when I roll them out for you. Give this video a thumbs up, like, and share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Budd, and I'll be seeing you.